it's February. So to continue our celebration of the 12 Agile principles, today we're going to talk about principle number two. Welcome changing requirements, even late in development. Agile process harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Change. Funny little word that was kind of feared back in the 1990s in the world of software development. So much so that project management developed this whole um, change management approach. Change is something you manage, you control. Eventually there are changes that you accept and they go into the project or not. And the problem with that is that it caused more fights and back and forth of contract and things like that than actually having uh, those companies and the, the software development teams servicing their customers and creating some sort of value as stated in um, the principle number one. So if we dissect the principle number two, let's start with the end of it because it tells us the why. The whole point why we accept change is because we serve our customers. We're talking about their competitive advantage. We're talking about thinking and loving and serving our customers. And if you're not giving your customers, be them other companies or individuals, if you don't give them what they need, they will eventually find it somewhere else. Now that we know the why, what else is there to see in this principle? I find three different things in there. One is partnering with the customer. A big misconception to undo is to think that the customer will change their minds all the time, every single day, based on the flavor of that day. While there are people showing out there that yes, if you adopt policies such as like a no sweat type of refund, uh, it's pretty successful and you actually just make more profit because you eliminate the risk of people not buying, thinking, well, what happens if I don't like that product? Um, so you kind of take that away. But let's just think it this way. The whole principle of adopting Agile is really developing a relationship with your customer, uh, you know, the person or the company that you serve. And we are living such unprecedented times now where change is everywhere. It is so fast paced. It, this is true for anyone, individuals and companies. But let's say that for your company, your customer is another company. If you don't help them to change as fast as possible, what happens is that they lose ground, they lose market, they lose sales. And so do you, so does your company. The relationship with the partner is one of conversation, is making those requirements emerge, getting that idea kind of rough at first and then refining it over time together. So the second thing that's coming up in here is that that's great. Now you understand your customer and you develop a partnership with them and you're talking and, and getting those rough ideas and it's time to iterate on them. Well, are your processes flexible enough to accept change? Because I see this often and often is everybody is sold on the idea with partnering the clients, but their processes are still full of red tape and it takes weeks or months for changes to actually be accepted. So not only your processes will need to be um, really uh, elastic, the same is to be said about the technology that you use to develop your product. The design, if you're talking um, software or even not software, you have to implement a technology that also allows for the same level of flexibility so that you can adjust the product really as you go. This is where the famous inspection and adaption will be coming into play. It really is how are you really accepting the customer and other stakeholders possibly into the conversation so that you can detect as early as possible that you are going in the right direction or that you need to course correct. So that's why I'm just gonna say it, but I'm pretty sure you notice as well. In a lot of those agile transformations out there, what is happening with this principle? Nothing. They are not collecting any benefit from this principle. From the experiences I had in many cases, what I see is they have layer upon layer of agile 
product management. So it's a deep hierarchy where people still keep passing orders along the chain, which makes me, let's say, the developer, far, far removed from you, the actual customer. So what ends up happening is that despite millions of dollars and you know two years into the agile transformation, we still have the developers not knowing, not seeing what is truly relevant for the customer, only learning about these things maybe six months, one year down the line after the release of the product into the market. Ultimately, accepting change late in the game speaks to a fundamental human bias, the sunk cost fallacy. It speaks to our tendency to stick to whatever we're doing just because we already invested money, effort, time in it, even though we detect that the costs heavily outweigh the benefits by this point. So it's the kind of like, well, we already spent a million here, so might as well just finish this thing. Oh, well. In companies where there is a lot of hierarchy or in some way they are slow to make decisions or the organizational learning as a whole is slow to happen, this bias tends to be strong. It's a little bit because of that telephone game where you keep losing information as you know it passes along the chain and the chain is quite deep. So nobody really has all the info, access to all the information at the same time or at least fast enough. So it's not that uh, change makes the product cost more, it's actually the other way around. It costs more because we inspect a little and late in the game. This is no doubt a challenging principle to adopt and only a piece of it can be done by the Agile teams themselves. Adopting this principle is about new ways of thinking around partnering with the customer, around having flexible processes and technology to support those processes, and seeing the cost of change differently. As you can imagine, I go a little bit deeper in the blog post, link down below, and go check it out if you have some time. And today, I'll leave you with this question. Do you know what is your customer competitive advantage? I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.